Hello there, this is Lisa Rossi and I am the Library Information Technology Specialist at Midway. Uh, I want to show you the way that I have used um, the Pixton comic website. Uh, it is, um, it's been highly engaging. I've used it with fifth grade. Um, you could definitely use it with fourth grade. Um, possibly third, but you really do have to have quite um, quite an adept um, control of uh, grammar and language and writing. So anyway, it's ideal for fifth and up, I would say, and um, had a little bit of success with fourth grade, but it's kind of complex because there's a lot of layers to it. But let me say a little bit about the medium. Um, one of, if you ask your librarians, we will tell you the most popular books are graphic novels. And um, students of all different reading levels and interest levels are really drawn to graphic novels because comic books are rad. And um, so many of them enjoy reading them. And so they've really had, conversely, a, a great time creating them. And a comic strip is essentially the beginnings of a graphic novel. So the way that I used Pixton was uh, creating comics about one concept of, okay, so we're going to sign in here while I'm talking. Uh, the assignment was show or express one aspect of digital citizenship. And so it left it up to the student to, um, and I helped them fine tune the ideas. Um, I recommend if you're using this, first of all, you could use it as an assignment. You can just use it to teach a concept that really needs to be a little bit more engaging. Maybe it's something dry, or maybe you want to teach um, a math concept, or you want to teach something that maybe doesn't normally have a visual, and you just create a visual. You can use a visual of yourself, an avatar of yourself, or you could use classmates. You can use the, a visual of somebody and call it a known person. Um, there are some free, so if we go to try it free, it's going to link to my um, account automatically. So you're going to say sign up with Google. It links seamlessly with our school Google accounts. And then mine's going to have classes because I can't unsign up. Okay. So yours will have no classes until you add one. You're going to add a classroom. Okay. And you can name it. And then, um, okay. So, uh, Mrs. Fredericks, I'm making up. Oh, hi. I don't know how to spell Fred. Okay, next. Which grade is this group? We'll go with fifth grade. Tune two. Um, I am going to say choose their Google IDs. All right, because then you can do use the same process that you use for other, um, for Google Classroom, for Newzella, for other different applications you may use where they're used to having a join code. So this will take them directly to, once they get this, will take them directly to their classroom. Okay. So then I'm going to go to one that's already created. Okay. Cause I don't want to create a fake classroom. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples as I'm showing you the class. So let's go to Miss Lada's class from last year. So what's great about this, you can see is each student has the opportunity to create their own avatar. Some of them look similar. Some of them are, you know, have some flair. They can make, uh, make themselves have pink and blue hair, which is, you know, super punk rock. Um, and then they choose their own expression. So that's their first kind of toying with the avatar. You also get to create an avatar. So mine looks like this. You get to choose your pose. That is not how the wrinkles in my face look, but it's the close. They didn't have the ones, you know, below the lips. But now we all have masks on, so we don't have wrinkles. So that's that's a little bonus. All right. So you get to choose your avatar. And then this is very cute. So you go to the class, go back to the class, and class photo shows all of you together, which is kind of cool. Um, also, when the students are creating their First, the rough drafts, and then eventually their um, concept through using the different um, the speech bubbles. There's three different kinds of speech bubbles. Um, 
they will, let me see if I can just show you. First of all, I'm going to give you some examples. I'll quickly go over how to create them. And there will be some troubleshooting. You got to be creative. You got to work with, there's a consistency necessary when you're doing a comic strip to make sure that the poses and movements and facial expressions are consistent with what's being said and with the different characters. And that's where kids really like getting in there and getting detailed and, um, and having a lot of, um, I guess, creative license. So let's go to, where are some ones that I really liked? Go back to students. These are some students who, let me hear, let's see, Clayton, who really got into this project. So this student had, you can tell, she tried to do, after she was done with her initial two um, comic strips that had to do with one concept of, most of them chose cyberbullying initially because I bought a pack and I'll show you that. So let's go to this one, the upside down day. So what she's done is she starts out with one scene. This is a really good, this is where you really do. If you decide essentially, by the way, if you decide that you are going to have a particular subject you're teaching, I recommend purchasing the content pack because the content pack gives you all the background and it gives you additional characters and it gives you additional props. Um, and here you can see she really got into um, making sure that the the facial the facial expressions. Oops, I'm getting a call. Pause. In any case, so they uh, this student was very. Um, she makes sure that her expressions match with the characters. Um, you can see the movements emote a certain thing. She's crying here. Her mom is appropriately mellow. Um, one of the things I really like about this too is the use of captions because you can take background information that really doesn't fit perhaps with the captions or with the actual conversation. So you can put, um, you can do the setting or you can talk about background uh, plot development here with the captions. Um, so let me, so that's one example. Let me show you another one. Um, we're going to go to this class. I think it was really good in camp. Let's see. And again, here's the class, class photo. Love it. All right. Students, let's go to, it was a Grady. Um, so his was just called digital citizenship. Um, he's doing, um, a cyber bullying as well. You're dumb and fat and no one likes you later the next morning. I didn't know I'm dumb and fat and no one likes me. Anyway, so just that it shows the power of um, taking on. So then he goes and he, the mom, of course, says, I will contact his mom and get him grounded from his phone for life. Hey, listen, when you turn it over to grownups, there's no rules. He got the concept. He put his own personality into it, his own voice. It was, it's great. All right, so that is what their finished product look products look like. And let me go if I can just start. Uh, I'm just going to start over. <laughs> I think so. I want to show you the content pack, and the, and then I'll show you um, the original. These are the different content packs. So if there's a particular topic that you're teaching, they're fantastic. A um, little expensive, but if it's an ongoing project, you want to split it with teachers. Uh, so let's exit there. And then um, let me go to my comics. New comic. Okay. Uh, it is going to be screencasting. Why so hard? All right. And then background. Well, I happen to have, let's go here. Okay, here's my first frame. And I'm going to caption words i can't understand why i can be so good at talking to actual people but i freeze and spaz out when i am creating a screen cast okay so we're going to go, there's one. Uh, oh, no, 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 that's no good. That's the caption. What the heck? Okay, let's go here. 
<laughs> See? Let's go here. Anyway, okay, and then we're going to add a panel. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll go here. And then characters. And I am going to be this person. And actually, I think I should have done, I'm going to do this. Uh, actually, let's go here. I'm going to take this. I don't want to have to rewrite what I did, but all right. Copy. No, I don't want to add. Oh, for heaven's sake. Really? I can't copy and paste? Well, that's a bother. So you you got to do some tinkering. Here is where I would actually, here's where I'm going to say words. All right. And I'm going to add words. Hey, why is it so hard to create a screencast? And then I'm saying that. Okay. And then I'll have somebody else respond. All right. So I'm going to have somebody else who is uh, at their computer and it's going to be not that person. I'm going to go um, characters. I'm going to add somebody else. Uh, not a, okay. How about this guy? Sure. 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 I don't anyway, see how it takes some tinkering. I, you can't just jump into this because I've used this several times and I'm still, if I have to do it on demand, it doesn't work. So my main plug for this program is highly engaging um, for the students and they have a wide range of uh, characters, clothing. Um, they can get trained in creating a sequential format, which promotes evaluative thinking um, progression, cause effect relationship. So those are some of the overall benefits besides it being, um, an engaging way to teach something in a different way and in a way that allows a lot of creative freedom. So I encourage you to try it. Um, and I hope that this helped you and, um, thank you for your time.